Imagine if the food on your plate were your best defense against cancer. Sounds amazing, right? Well, it's more of a possibility than you may think. While no single food alone can stop cancer, research is now proving that consistently eating cancer-fighting foods will significantly reduce your risk. And yes, some foods are more powerful than others. So in this video, I'll be talking about what some of the top experts are saying about using food as medicine and the top five foods you should be focusing on to help your body kill cancer cells. In fact, they say that up to 40% of cancers can be prevented by eating these foods regularly. I'm Sarah from Remission Support. Having worked in oncology for over 17 years, I started this YouTube channel to help cancer survivors know which foods will help them beat cancer or keep it from coming back. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel so the YouTube algorithm will show it to more people who can benefit from these videos as well. One of the most renowned experts on this subject is Dr. William Lee. In case you haven't heard of him, Dr. Lee is an established physician and researcher who promotes certain foods like dark chocolate, tomatoes, sourdough bread, and mangoes, for example, for their massive impact on cancer prevention and treatment. His TED Talk, Can We Eat to Starve Cancer?, has more than 11 million views, and his book titled Eat to Beat Disease is a major New York Times bestseller. In his book, he provides evidence behind over 200 different foods that help to kill cancer cells, reduce your risk of dementia, and beat dozens of avoidable diseases. Dr. Lee claims that eating certain foods lowers your cancer risk by stopping something called angiogenesis. This is when tumors develop new blood vessels to feed themselves and grow. So in theory, anything that can stop the blood flow to a tumor can make it shrink. Dr. Lee's research has shown that foods like plums, apples, and olive oil, for example, can influence angiogenesis, potentially stopping or slowing cancer growth. Although his research is still what we call limited, because more evidence is needed to prove that your diet alone can stop angiogenesis, he has successfully proven that we can use our diet to help control cancer. As he puts it, it's not about finding a cure, it's about creating an environment where your body can heal itself. So in other words, you want to create an environment in your body where your immune system is so strong that it can easily detect and kill precancerous cells before they turn into cancer. And the best way to do this is by eating certain foods that support your immune system regularly. We also know that, unfortunately, cancer treatments like chemo or radiation therapy aren't nearly as effective if you have a poor diet. In fact, studies are now showing that eating foods that are high in certain vitamins and nutrients can improve your cancer treatment outcomes by 50%. That's huge. That's like the difference between trying to put out a fire with or without a fire extinguisher. But scientists who do this type of research, like Dr. Lee, get a lot of scrutiny from other medical doctors. The problem is the medical industry doesn't care about food, and the food industry doesn't care about health. The food industry aims to make your food look and taste as good as possible and last as long as possible by filling it with chemicals that are making us sick. And the medical world focuses solely on curing illnesses rather than preventing them. But scientists like Dr. Lee are working to bridge both of these worlds to help people have healthier diets and therefore less illnesses like diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Another advocate for using food as medicine is Dr. Mark Hyman, who's an expert in functional medicine and has several videos here on YouTube that encourage people to use food as part of their cancer treatment. He claims that as research is continuing to evolve, it's becoming increasingly clear that we can eat to beat cancer. In one of his videos, he says that healthy fats are a cornerstone of an anti-cancer diet. Healthy fats like those found in olive oil, avocados, fatty fish like salmon or tuna contain omega fatty acids that have anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties. But in my opinion, the best advice on cancer nutrition from Dr. Hyman is that a diet high in healthy fats coupled with low refined carbohydrates can help maintain stable blood sugar levels and therefore reduce your cancer risk. You see, elevated blood sugar and insulin levels have been linked to an increased risk of several different types of cancer, including breast and colon cancer. Dr. Hyman strongly advises against eating sugar because it's the leading cause of obesity, insulin resistance, and chronic inflammation, all of which are huge risk factors for cancer. So by reducing the amount of sugar and processed foods we eat, we can create an environment in our body that is less conducive to cancer growth. Okay, great, so we have these experts telling us what to eat and what not to, but a major problem is that making healthy dietary changes and sticking with them long-term is not easy for most people. 
It's not easy to start choosing broccoli or spinach over potatoes, or to be consistently making healthy home-cooked meals rather than ordering a pizza when you're busy or tired. In my opinion, every cancer patient should not only be given education on what to eat to beat cancer, but also how to make healthy changes to their diet that they will stick with long-term. So Dr. Lee's advice is to focus mainly on eating a variety of cancer-fighting foods rather than avoiding certain foods. This advice has pros and cons. On one hand, this advice is great because by empowering you to eat more whole foods like fruits and vegetables, you'll inevitably be eating less processed foods like sweets or anything deep fried. And it's been proven that it's easier to stick with a healthy diet if you're focusing more on what you can eat rather than what you can't eat. But on the other hand, as important as it is to be consistently eating cancer-fighting foods, Foods, it's equally as important to be limiting or avoiding unhealthy foods like french fries or ice cream. So in other words, if only 50% of your diet is healthy, you can still easily negate all the benefits you get from these healthy foods by eating garbage the rest of the time. Dr. Hyman has a slightly different approach to fighting cancer with food, which I find more effective because he encourages people to do a blood test to determine if they're deficient in certain essential nutrients like iron or magnesium, for example, so they can then focus on correcting these deficiencies by eating more foods that are rich in those nutrients or taking supplements. And this approach is great because cancer treatment is notorious for causing deficiencies in some of the vitamins that are most important for helping you beat cancer, like vitamin D or antioxidants from vitamin vitamin A or C for example. If you're deficient in these, your immune system isn't going to be as strong, so it will have a harder time identifying and destroying any leftover cancer cells that your treatments may have missed. Regardless of their different approaches to an anti-cancer diet, there are certain foods that Dr. Lee and Dr. Hyman both agree on because not only do they help reduce angiogenesis, but they can also strengthen your immune system and correct nutritional deficiencies. So let's go over these five top anti-cancer foods you should be adding to your diet as much as possible. Number one, berries. All types of berries can help you beat cancer in a few different ways. For one, they're rich in antioxidants, which helps protect your cells from damage. Secondly, they're also high in anti-inflammatory compounds that help to reduce systemic inflammation. And thirdly, Dr. Lee's research has shown that there are natural chemicals in berries that can help stop angiogenesis. Some say that darker berries like blueberries or blackberries are better than strawberries or raspberries in terms of their anti-cancer effects, but they're all extremely high in fiber, which is also really important for cancer prevention because fiber helps to detoxify the body and again, reduces systemic inflammation. Cancer fighting food number two, tomatoes. Tomatoes are packed with lycopene, another powerful antioxidant that's been linked to a reduced risk of several types of cancer. But Dr. Lee points out that lycopene is especially effective against prostate cancer. So this is something for all men over the age of 50 to consider or their wives or loved ones who cook for them. Cooking tomatoes increases the amount of lycopene available for your body to absorb. So making a homemade tomato sauce could be more beneficial than eating tomatoes raw. Cancer fighting food number three are cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and kale, for example, which all contain sulforaphane. This anti-cancer compound is known for detoxifying the body from harmful substances, which helps to reduce inflammation and protect against the type of DNA damage that can lead to cancer development. Dr. Lee claims that cruciferous vegetables are one of the top foods for preventing angiogenesis. So similar to berries, there are multiple ways that cruciferous vegetables can help your body beat cancer or keep it from coming back. My favorite way to eat broccoli or cauliflower is oven roasted with garlic and Parmesan cheese. And you can also add tomato sauce to it for extra antioxidants. And it's absolutely delicious. I'm getting hungry now. Cancer fighting food number four, mushrooms. Certain types of mushrooms like shiitake, portobello, or cremini have been used in traditional medicine for centuries because they contain macronutrients that your immune system can benefit from. For example, things like selenium. This helps your body make antioxidant enzymes to prevent cell damage. Cremini or portobello mushrooms are especially high in selenium, but most types of mushrooms are also rich in vitamin D, which is arguably the most important vitamin for preventing cancer. In fact, if you're taking a multivitamin, please make sure that there's enough vitamin D in it because not only will it boost your immune function and reduce inflammation, it also helps your body absorb calcium and magnesium. Magnesium is really important for getting quality sleep and calcium is crucial for our bone health as we age because we naturally lose bone density, especially as women after menopause. And thirdly, mushrooms are also high in vitamin B6. 
This helps your body form red blood cells, proteins, and DNA. So at a cellular level, eating mushrooms can help to prevent the genetic mutations that lead to cancer. Shiitake mushrooms are the best choice for vitamin B6. Okay, cancer fighting food number five, turmeric. Both Dr. Lee and Dr. Hyman frequently mention the benefits of turmeric, which is a spice that has been shown to inhibit the growth of cancer cells and reduce the ability for cancer cells to spread to other areas of the body because of its powerful anti-cancer effects. And if you're not used to cooking with turmeric, some people find it difficult to know what to put it in, but really you can add it to any sauces, burgers, eggs, or even take turmeric supplements. I have a video titled Five Antioxidant Drinks Proven to Fight Cancer, which I'll link for you below, because one of the drinks I go over is a turmeric latte, which is really delicious and it's a great way to get turmeric in. So these are only really five of the top foods you should be focusing on after cancer. Ideally, you want to be adding a variety of cancer-fighting foods to your diet consistently to optimize your chances of beating cancer or keep it from coming back. So I'm also linking my extensive list of cancer-fighting foods below this video, as well as another video for you to watch next on cancer-fighting herbs that can further strengthen your immune system. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.